So I've got something uh, rather different than the presentations that we've had so far, uh, which I really enjoyed. Well done, everybody. I think this is a great event. Uh, I'm really excited to be here. Uh, let's see. I studied math at the University of Waterloo. Uh, when I was a mediocre student, unfortunately. <laughs> I didn't make it my way through. Uh, I've worked in uh, entrepreneurial roles since I uh, graduated uh, in California, uh, Texas, New York, and here. Um, now I'm a dad. Uh, I have two young kids, and uh, I started this business you know, fairly earnestly. Uh, I came about it honestly. Um, my, um, my father passed away uh, after a long decline uh, with cancer, and so I became familiar with all of the uh, uh, stages that people go through, you know, during that period, uh, all of the needs of families. I became really sensitive to uh, the needs of families at the end of life. And on a much happier note, uh, my son was born around the same time, and so I became very sensitive to the needs of families at the beginning of life. And so um, I was at the time working at an investment fund uh, and then incubated this startup. And uh, if you would look back in the archives, you'll find a TechTO talk from like two years ago or two and a half years ago or something like that, uh, where I talked about the formation of the company. That was probably when we were in this stage around here in the graph. And uh, we collated this very enviable domain name portfolio and did some other ingenious things to get the business started. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so check that out for the backstory. This will be like a catch up from that point. Um, but I, I guess I should say, what Care Guide does is match families with care providers. And so we specialize in uh, non-medical care. So unlike a lot of the things that we've talked about so far this evening, uh, we're talking about nannies, uh, housekeepers, uh, non-medical elder care, pet sitting, and so on. And so we have, a, uh, we have a property dedicated to each of these major care categories but they all run on a common operations, technology, support, marketing platform. And so uh, we've been uh, fairly successful with the strategy. You can see what sort of happened to our revenue over the last couple of years. Uh, we crossed uh, $5 million in uh, annual recurring revenue uh, this fall, which was a fun milestone. And uh, we're at about 1.7 million users a month, so we have a pretty decent scale. Um, our business is split between Canada and the U.S., um, with m the majority of it being in the U.S. So, uh, over the last few years, one thing that we've become very sensitive to is the cost of childcare in the U.S. This is a graph of, uh, well, uh, the overall prices is like general inflation and how the major categories of household expenditures have changed over the last decade. Uh, and you'll find that, you know, top of the list is medical care. Uh, Obamacare has been, been a big political football, and now we've got Trump care or whatever's coming next. Uh, but right behind that uh, is child care. And it's a major problem uh, for families because wages have not gone up uh, in line with that. And so uh, we've been hearing about it nonstop over the last several years. And what I'm about to share with you today. Uh, and this is the first time, by the way, that I'm, I'm talking to anybody about it, really, uh, is our solution to this. So, at the same time that we've been sensitive to this rising cost of childcare, we have also noticed a phenomenon cropping up all across the U.S. And that is these ad hoc nanny share groups that have been cropping up on uh, Facebook in particular, uh, but also Nextdoor, and uh, an endless stream of uh, Craigslist posts for families that wish to share uh, a nanny. And so uh, traditionally, uh, nannies would be, it would be a one-to-one -one relationship, one family and one nanny. But because of that rising cost of childcare, uh, families have been uh, joining forces and hiring a nanny jointly. And so this is something that has been happening in an ad hoc fashion in an accelerating pace over the last 18 to 24 months in particular. And so we've seen groups on Facebook. This one is a little bit blurry. I don't know, I can't point to it. Uh, but they've got thousands of members just after a few months. And so this is a phenomenon that's happening. This is something that we didn't invent. This is a tide that is coming in uh, that we hope to capitalize on. 
And so the solution is to formalize this process of getting matched with a nanny, sh with another family and with a nanny to form a nanny share. And so uh, the paradigm is not that, uh, say, my family would have the nanny in the morning and your family would have the nanny in the afternoon. It's not split like that. The care is rendered um, uh, at the same time, simultaneously. So, uh, so it would be the case that if you and I were to enter a nanny share, we would uh, uh, have the nanny take care of our children in the morning before school perhaps, and then pick them up from school afterwards at the same time. They would maybe pick them up at my house, go to your house, uh, or vice versa, uh, like that, at, as per the schedule. And so the, I think the, uh, the benefits to the family is obvious economically. They can save money. Uh, but through our formulation, uh, it's also really good for the nanny. Because what's not good for the nanny is making the same amount of money, uh, but uh, having two bosses, twice as many children to care for. Uh, so that's where we're coming in here, uh, to formalize the business model around nanny share. And so uh, in this very simplistic example, um, we have the more familiar uh, formulation, which is a, a one family, one nanny, and you may pay that family, or you may pay that nanny $3,000 a month. In a nanny share situation, it's not the case that each family would then pay half of that. They would, uh, according to our regime, pay, say, $2,000 each. Thus, they would save a substantial amount of money, but crucially, the nanny would take home more. And so this has two effects on the macroeconomics of it. One, it expands demand, because a lot more families can afford $2,000 a month than they can afford three. And the nannies, uh, there are more women that will be attracted to the profession at $4,000 a month than, than at three. And again, these numbers are just examples uh, for the math. They, of course, vary dramatically uh, from market to market. So uh, our business right now uh, is supply and demand matchmaking. You know, we have, like I said, 1.7 million users a month that are doing this. We're matching them with housekeepers and with nannies, which is our largest category, by the way, uh, elder care and so on. But all of those examples are one-to-one -one matching. And so we've gone back to first principles and thought this through carefully when it comes to like a three-way matching situation. It turns out the dynamics are a lot more complicated. Um, this is, you know, one sort of, you know, illustration of it, uh, but it actually is more complicated than this. Um, and I actually don't really have the appetite to walk everyone through some of the thinking here, but the point is, is you have a triangle and you can complete any side of the triangle first. And so the onboarding flows and everything like that can be very different. Uh, it's certainly a lot more complicated than just uh, supply and demand matching like we're uh, accustomed to doing. So, uh, as a business person, this is probably the slide I'm most excited about. And if there's one slide that I would like you to think about in evaluating what uh, we're trying to do here, it would probably be this one. So, uh, this is according to the U.S. Census. Um, or, pardon me, the U.S. Labor Bureau or something like that. Uh, there are 33 million families in the U.S. with children in the age ranges that we're discussing. About half of those children are currently cared for during the day by a relative, usually a stay-at-home mom, sometimes a dad, uh, sometimes a grandparent. The other half of those children are either shipped off to daycare or they have a nanny that comes to their home, a solo nanny. And then, uh, it's not very clear uh, on this projector, but I drew in a little sliver there for, for the ad hoc nanny shows that we're observing are taking place already. And so that's, that's how children are cared for right now in the US. Our idea in pursuing this opportunity is to make that little sliver, and I, I just, the other numbers are real, that one I just sort of estimated, but to take that sliver and to blow it up by drawing on the other three constituencies. And that uh, is because of the economics that I described earlier. So by dropping the price of high quality care in your home from $3,000 to $2,000, some number of those stay-at-home moms uh, may return to work because they can get a level of care in their home uh, that would make the economics make sense for them. 
And so, as you can see, there's not a lot of difference between the length of these two bars, but crucially, some amount of them will decide to pursue a nanny share instead of uh, staying at home. The value proposition of a nanny share is uh, very obvious opposite uh, daycare. Uh, because the child care, the, the, the caregiver to child ratio is, uh, is way out of whack when it comes to daycare, like one caregiver for every 12 children or something like that. In a nanny share, of course, it would be an order of magnitude lower than that. And it's administered in your home. If your child is sick, uh, you can still go to work. Uh, the, uh, the lifestyle of having a nanny is just so much different than, than having a daycare. I don't know if there's a lot of parents in the house here that would uh, recognize that. Uh, it's certainly true. Yeah. Um, and then one thing that, uh, and then the last constituency, those families that are currently employing a full-time nanny, it's actually those that will draw on perhaps the most. Uh, remember, we specialize in, in doing that kind of matchmaking today, so we have a, uh, a really good understanding of what those families are doing, and we survey them. So we've matched over uh, 18,000 families with nannies in the last 18 months or so, and we surveyed them. And we found that 34% of those families that we've matched with their nanny, that are currently employing that nanny, would rather be in a nanny share right now. And so we asked them, and we, uh, Alyssa here is in the audience, she's the one that conducted the survey. It was like, on Monday, would you be willing to share your nanny with another suitable family on your street uh, to save $1,000 a month? And 34% of them said yes. And so we would certainly be drawing on this constituency to move into nanny shares. And so um, the business opportunity here, if we are able to do that, and over the next three or four years, convince 5% of families in the US to pursue this model of care for their children instead of the alternatives, you know, at the business model that uh, we're considering, we're looking at a billion, dollar, billion and a half dollars in yearly revenue. And of course, that sounds ridiculous. It's got a B in it. Um, but this, the template for this uh, slide came from the Series A deck uh, that I reviewed from Airbnb when it pitched Greylock on, for their Series A investment. And they had something that looked exactly like this. And they had uh, business travel, and they had personal travel, and all that. And the little tiny sliver was bed and breakfast. And it was this tiny little thing, and they took that, and then they exploded the model. And that's exactly what we're pursuing here as well. And I can give you more examples. There's a real trend, of course, uh, around fractional ownership of assets, the gig economy. There's a lot of precedence for this type of thing to occur. And our belief is that we can make it happen in this industry uh, in the next three or four years and build a, a really uh, notable business uh, and one that really changes the lives of millions and millions of parents and children. I've got a couple more slides. Oh, So, um, the product that we've come up with is all new. It's called Nanny Lane. It's the first time I've ever said that publicly. Uh, but we have launched it, uh, so you can check it out. Unfortunately, we only have it available in the US right now, uh, not in Canada. Uh, but uh, it's, it's taken off. Um, I'm checking the numbers constantly throughout the day. We're currently at a run rate of about 60,000 users a month, and it's growing, uh, it's growing really rapidly. Like day over day, we're looking at double digit uh, growth in terms of signups and engagements, and uh, we're, we're pretty proud of it. So uh, that's all I got. I encourage you to check it out, and I especially encourage you to follow up with me. If anybody here is interested in marketplaces, interested in um, you know, the type of themes that I've been discussing here. I'd love to talk to you. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, AngelList. Uh, I, I literally do these things so that I can connect with people and make more friends, uh, learn new ideas. So please uh, connect with me and follow up afterwards. Thank you. I was actually just messaging my sister because I was like, you have to check this out, but she lives in Montreal and she just, I was just there and she told me, sorry, in Montreal alone there's a wait list of daycares, I don't have kids so I didn't know, but it's like a thousand families on the wait list for daycares.
So, excited for when you launch in Canada. Any questions at all? Yeah, the true question is uh, why not yet in Canada? Is it because of this priority or is it because of regulatory or what was the reason why not in Canada yet? Yeah, there's no regulatory uh, concern here. Uh, in most regions, there are rules around daycares, uh, but they, that's only when the number of children exceeds a certain number, and almost anywhere will accommodate uh, the type of arrangements that we've, uh, we've done. To be perfectly honest with you, the reason why we're not launching it in Canada is because we have CanadianNanny.ca, uh, which is the incumbent largest nanny matchmaking service in Canada already in our portfolio. And uh, we have a different playbook for the U.S. where we're more the insurgent and we need to be uh, innovative and disrupt the, uh, the norm there. Fascinating because I made the same slide, slide like two years ago. Um, we were launching, we were trying to do a, a daycare at a home kind of business in the box. Oh, so, will technically up to five children be that kind of daycare at home? Like, is that what nannies operate as in the US as well? It depends entirely on uh, the region, it's different from state to state. Uh, but for the arrangements that we're looking at, pretty much everything uh, slides because the care is administered in the family's home, not at the caregiver's home. And is it like Canada, they have an up to five, six children limit? That it's like that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, one last question. Uh, first off, really good presentation. Just explain things like really, really well from like a business standpoint, just from like a good I think it was really good. Um, what do you, I mean, you guys just launched a month ago. But what are the biggest challenges that you see uh, facing in the next 12 months or 11 months? Uh, that's a good question. Um, so there's two aspects to the business. Uh, first is the matchmaking liquidity and getting the three-way matching mechanisms working and we're still working through some of the kinks there but I, I feel like we'll solve that. The second would be on the backswing of making the matches which is the administration and payroll and helping families manage all the friction of this more complex employment arrangement. And so uh, the U.S. is famous for a Byzantine tax code and so we need to wrestle with all of that to help families you know, uh, be above board and to do all of these things. You know, uh, if I may just go off on a tangent, one thing that actually really works in our favor right now is uh, the U.S. administration's um, aversion to immigration and illegal employment. And, uh, you know, I, as much as I may not agree with all of Trump's policies, it actually works in our favor in this business because you know there would be less, say, Mexican labor that's coming in to do childcare, and then more of a requirement for uh, families to do above-board payment. And so, if they're paying a nanny illegally in a certain, uh, you know, at a certain rate, they would, may not be able to afford to pay her uh, legally because of the taxes and so on. Thus, you know, a nanny share becomes even more uh, relevant. Uh, and another wind that's at our back is uh, minimum wage. So you may have heard uh, of the changes that are coming to Ontario. Um, there's already been minimum wage increases in Portland and Seattle and other, other cities. Uh, and so that's going on uh, across the country. And so there's, there's just a lot of reasons why uh, we need to solve the payroll part of it. And so that's something that I think we'll have to figure out in 2018. Once we're putting all these triad multi, you know, two family, one in combinations together. Thank you so much.